Hello, I'm here with the fantastic viola player of the Sacconi Quartet, Robin Ashwell. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hello Robin. Robin features in my piece Canto, uh, which is going to be on the Heartfelt album coming out imminently. Robin, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you Roxana. Good, I love your shirt. Thank you, I wore it especially for you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> So Robin, um, there seems to be a sort of pattern I realise, um, the more of these interviews I do with all the amazing artists who've taken part in the CD, of actually trying to make their, their instruments or their voices sound like something else, mm. and I'm starting to feel really guilty about it. Um, <laughs> And, and the thing about Canto is that it's based on um, this beautiful piece of Ashkenazi chant. Um, but the lower register of the viola really does almost sound, it's got the huskiness of a human voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think the low register on a, vi a viola can be, can be many things. I mean, it can be gritty and powerful and earthy and, and, and boom. Um, or it can be um, this fantastic, melancholic, haunting sound. And that's really what I tried to achieve in, in the beginning of your piece. Not necessarily because it's marked as such, just because that felt right. And you so did. You so did. You captured it absolutely on the button. And um, the piece was written, like Horror Bessarabia, it was written for a competition. It was written for the Lionel Turtis mm -hmm. viola competition. And there are some difficult passages in there. And I just wondered whether your thoughts ever turned to, to how those poor contestants might have felt when they were <laughs> faced with that. <laughs> To be honest, I was more thinking about poor me being faced with it. No, I had every confidence in the contestants who would have who who played it for you in in twenty nineteen, and I was I was seriously wondering how I would live up to their delivery of it. It was it was a very long term challenge for me taking on this piece. It was something I didn't take on lightly, but something I really really wanted to do. Um, um, for many, many reasons, and and certainly to have a little moment on this disc uh, that was my track, and also I really liked the idea of having the the Menuhin piece and the Turtis piece both on the the disc as well as the the, the bigger chamber works. So I'm it was so something. Pleased. I'm so pleased. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm so pleased that you you did choose it and you did get your moment because. Um, the viola quite wrongly is often um, sidelined or the the butt of, of, of orchestral jokes when yeah. actually I think it's, you know, probably the most, I'm going to get in terrible trouble for saying this, but I do think it's the most, um, for me, the most expressive almost of the string instruments because it encompasses that lower dusky mellow range right up to high where the violins are and you you've got um the best of both worlds haven't yeah. you well we certainly can go very high um i mean not quite as high as the violin but i think once you're up right at the top end of the viola i think no no one's gonna say that it's is not high enough and uh, i've heard um graham oppenheimer once described the c string as the viola's secret weapon <laughs> so we have got that fantastic range um, I think the you know all the viola jokes and that they're quite fun actually. I've always enjoyed that side of being a viola player, but I think it's a very historic thing, hmm. you know, from from uh, partly from actually, actually centuries ago. In yeah. fact, when I was at uh, the Royal College of Music, um, I had some uh, sessions with um, Kat McIntosh, the brilliant Baroque violinist, and she talked about the um, treaties by um, uh, uh, Giminiani. I think, which says um, that uh, it, all violinists should practice this, uh, these exercises and uh, it, viola players, if they also practice them, they need not stay viola players for very long. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a centuries old tradition of ribbing the viola players. Aww. But this, you know, it, it has very, very little relevance today. You know, it's absolutely fantastic viola players around. I absolutely agree, and um, and the quality of this 
recording is absolutely beautiful. Our, both our um, producer, Raphael Moutet, and um, our sound people were amazing. Um, and I played the recording of Canto to, to somebody recently, and I think I forwarded her comments on to you. She was, she was really moved by it. But also she said she loved that she could hear in a few places, she could hear you breathing. Mm -hmm. And she found the intimacy of that um, absolutely formative to her enjoyment and the amount that she was moved by in the piece. Yeah, yeah it's a really interesting one. And it, and it just, it, it, it sort of goes to the nub of the, the recording process where, you know, we make the record, we, we, we do the sessions, we go away and then it's um, edited and it comes back to us and we listen I listened the first time and and first of all i was really blown away by the sound that 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 rafael and, and mike hatch and the t a team achieved on that i was really really pleased with that and then i thought right i'll, I'll give it another listen now just check i haven't missed anything and i start to hear this and then and then i start to hear that and then i'm thinking ah oh, you know it, it, perhaps, is it worth exploring other takes and the more i went round, the more my breaths started to bother me and so I then you know sent Raphael a whole long list of places where uh you know I could hear a lot of breathing and and the more you hear you listen the more you hear it and the more you just hear the breathing rather than the notes and he sent back a very very reassuring message saying the breathing is part of it it's it's not intrusive and and anyway it's part of the music and he actually he told me it was very beautiful which I think was his way of saying just just calm down <laughs> It's going right, to be okay. Right. So it's yeah. so hard, isn't it? You've got this sort of dilemma where um, it's such a luxury to be able to create a recording of a piece by doing as many takes as you like and and trying different things, but at the same time, then you sort of start hearing things that aren't necessarily there when you're listening to the yeah. edits, and. We it's very difficult not to be too fussy about it. It's very, I mean, that is the the challenge of recording. We're wanting to, to capture the performance energy and something that's spontaneous, but we're also aware we're making a product. It's not a live concert recording, mm -hmm. which would have coughs and sneezes and, and, and little imperfections probably, but that's part of the, 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 the concert experience. We, we are making something slightly different that 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 we want to last for posterity and then it, it's where you um come between those two extremes that's that's the challenge to to yeah satisfy both yeah and there were i mean there were potentially um quite a few challenges given the timing of the recording sessions we were incredibly lucky so um, the first bunch of sessions was two weeks before the first lockdown in, in March 2020. And then the second load of sessions was in July after the lockdown and things were just beginning to open up again. So we were really lucky, but there was always that worry, was it going to happen the second lot or wasn't it? Um, but And uh, actually we couldn't go and do the sessions where we planned to do them. So the first bunch of sessions were in a church um, which couldn't be open for safety reasons to do with the pandemic for our second lot of sessions. And there was a worry about whether would there be a unity of sound or um, and, and could we find somewhere else, you know, at this short notice. But we were very lucky. We, we got the fantastic Saffron Hall and, um, and it, it was a really wonderful experience. But we, I really do feel that we sort of, got away by the skin of our teeth last year with, with yeah. getting those sessions in and it could have been a massive challenge um, and the other thing that was really lovely was to be able to do an online concert just before the second mm -hmm. batch of sessions it was yeah. like a tryout yes wasn't it yeah and, um, to be able to do that it's something that we've done um, when we've made our, our previous CDs. Um, in, in fact, actually, the first time we, we did that was our very first proper recording, I think, which was with Roddy, Roddy Williams, in 2006 or something like that. It's on Naxos. It's the Finzi song cycle by Footpath and Style. And we did just that. We met one day and rehearsed. 
and then we met again the day before the uh, sessions and we did a house concert. I'm not sure where we did it. We might have even gone straight to the studio, which which uh, for that uh, it was Potton Hall. And we might have even given our little house concert performance to the, the family who owned Potton Hall. Anyway, we did that. And then the, on the following day, obviously made the recording. And we did find it worked very well, especially for a, a bespoke piece, which we're putting together for the purpose of the recording uh, rather than um, having performed it lots of times in concert and then laying it down. So um, we, we've done that for other discs and I was really keen that we do that for, for, for these July sessions, um, particularly because we'd never played, never performed Heartfelt because exactly. that was brand new. So um, we couldn't do it um, uh, to a live audience, but um, you know we did it on Zoom uh, sorry, we did it on YouTube, live on YouTube. And it was a very, very exciting experience because it was our first um, chance to get out since since um, March. And um, uh, yeah, a very positive and exciting experience. And, and I'm sure the, the recording was was all the better for it the following day. Absolutely, because it's very nerve wracking as a composer to write a piece that's then recorded without a performance without a tryout beforehand because recording is such a permanent thing it's there once it's done it's done forever um so to be able to try it out first was was a fantastic opportunity and 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 it's still available on the Sakoni youtube channel isn't it how yes. do people find it is it by date um uh I, i'm not sure it's there it's it's quite high in the listings i think it says yeah roxana punifnik uh, concerts it's yeah. there on our channel and through our website yeah. um we did a very special performance um last week we went to perform um heartfelt uh to albie the bear whose heartbeat i used in the piece um and it was an incredible day and I wondered what you came away with at the end of it. Oh, I came away with a very warm feeling and actually um, very happy because I, I was worried all along that we would go all the way down there and, and Albie the bear would take one look at us and go off into his house. <laughs> and it couldn't have been um, more the opposite. Um, we we struck up and we were on... Um, uh, at, at the wild place in Bristol, the enclosure is is really beautifully done. Um, very open enclosure built on a hillside, and then with a, a wooden walkway elevated, which all the uh, the customers go on. So we were up on this walkway, and uh, with the, the the bears were in their enclosure behind us. I think they'd been dropped a bit of food to to get them into that area. Um, but it's a very big area nonetheless, and uh, they could have gone anywhere. And there was a house up at the top of the hill I saw they could go in. We ran it through once and they were pottering about behind and sort of looking about. And then we ran it again. And, and at the end, um, uh, you, Roxana, Roxana and, and others were saying, look, look, look behind you. And so, so we looked behind and uh, the two of the bear, there were four bears in the enclosure and two of them were down there literally side by side with their paws up on a on a um big tree trunk uh sort of looking up listening and looking and it was fabulous and, what um, you and very did, moving it was very moving and what you didn't see also was that the moment you actually started tuning up alby came and sat on this platform behind you and he sat through two performances of the piece um and it was just really you know you couldn't have wanted for more really mm. he he was completely engaged with it and um and now i'm madly in love with albie and desperate to visit him again um but i think it would be fantastic if we could go and play to them again or maybe even find some other animals as a source of inspiration and play to them but it 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 seems that animals do do benefit from music, and I, can, I must look I into. I can see a research. series coming. Yeah, so can I. So can I. I also thought, you know, it was it was the culmination of, uh, you know, this whole project. But but what what you did with that movement was very special because the the brief for anyone who doesn't know the brief that we gave you 
was we wanted the our piece to be in some way about heartbeat um relating to an earlier project that that, that we'd done called heart also called heartfelt and at, at the same time you were very interested in this book about the the end of um the last the dancing bears i don't mean the end of them the end of their lives but their their retirement because bear dancing had finally become outlawed in bulgaria and and by um yeah, finding Albi and, and, and um, getting that recording of his heartbeat, you brought those two strands together so beautifully. And the piece, you know, is the piece is a deeply moving lament with or without a heartbeat. But then then with that heartbeat element as well, it's it's um, yeah, it's something very, very special. We're very lucky to have had it. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm very lucky to have had the opportunity to write it for you. So thank you very much. And also for making this fantastic CD. It's it's really wonderful and I'm thrilled to bits with it. So thank you very much. Great pleasure. It's been, you know, it feels like we, we really are, you know, with the release next week, we're sort of at the end of this project and it's at least two years in the making if not three and I'm always amazed when when it finally gets to the end of these sort of commissioning and recording projects and this this one especially because not not only with all the issues of the pandemic to deal with but we've as well as the quartet the six other musicians mm -hmm. very big time and busy musicians on this CD and your good self who we were working with the whole time you know through the sessions and and just getting all those people together and to rehearse and 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 run we we did a similar house performance for the first yeah. lot of sessions as well didn't we in march and then the recordings and um uh yeah it's uh, just amazing really that it's that it's happened but uh, you know having held the product in my hand now i feel so proud yeah. to have done that and and most proud of all that we've we've released all of this music none of which was recorded before. I mean, it's so remarkable to have a whole CD and it's nearly 80 minutes. It's chock full of all of um, Premiere recordings. Yeah. I'm just absolutely thrilled and, and proud and um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, me too, <laughs> me too. Thank you so much, Robin. It's really lovely to see you today. Thank you. You too, Roxana. All right, bye. <laughs>